Okay, so first of all, we have to read this correctly. I have a picture of this quadratic. I've graphed it here. So how this reads is, when is the quadratic less than zero? Does everybody see how that reads? When is the quadratic less than zero? Or when is the quadratic below zero? We read it from left to right. Now everybody, looking. When is the quadratic below zero? Now everybody, here's the y-axis. Here's zero, correct? Here's zero for y. So then everything that, when is the quadratic below zero? Isn't that from here? All are all these where the quadratic's below zero? Yeah. Those are our solutions then. So our solutions are from what x value? From this x value to this x value. Isn't the quadratic below zero? So on an interval from negative 1 up to 5, our quadratic was below 0, right? Yes. Okay, so then it says, can it include 0? Can it be 0? Yes. yes. Yeah, so it means also when is it equal to 0? Well, right on the x-axis, that's where it's equal to 0. So it includes negative 1 and it includes 5. So we would do a bracket and a bracket because it includes those. So if we have a graph, it's really easy to see the solutions from negative. That is true. From negative 1 up to 5, the function was below 0. Like it says, when is it below 0? So what do I see? Because it's including 0 right here. It says when or, or equal to 0. So let's pretend it just was this, less than 0, instead of or equal to 0. Then it could not equal that value and that value. So we'd say it went from negative 1 up to 5, but it didn't include negative 1 and it didn't include 5. Parentheses would be not including, right? Same theme throughout the year. Okay, now let's change it. Let's uh, pretend that that's not highlighted. And let's solve. Let's read this. When is the quadratic greater than zero? That means above zero. So wouldn't that be here it's greater than zero and here it's greater than zero? Mm -hmm. So let's write down our solutions if that was the case. So for x from negative infinity up to this x value, that's when it was above 0. So from negative infinity up to negative 1, right? And then was it including 0? No. So it would be a parenthesis. Then also, so we say union, then also from 5 to infinity. You guys are talking right into my video. And it's making it suck. Okay. So then from 5 to infinity, right, everybody? 5 to infinity. Yay, awesome. So the thing is, is that was easy because I gave you a graph. Do you want to have to graph all these? Not really. So um, this is how we're going to do it instead, an easier way. We don't want to have to graph the quadratic. You're not always going to be given the picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to just draw a number line like an x-axis here. So let me just show you. I'm leaving the solutions here because you're going to see it comes out the same. What we're going to do is, since it says, when is the quadratic less than or equal to zero, we're going to find our zeros because it says we want to know when it's below zero. So we've got to find our zeros. So how do you find the zeros of a quadratic? Factor it and solve, right? That's how we find the x-intercepts. X-intercepts are zeros, right, everybody? So we would factor that. What multiplies to be negative 5 and adds up to be negative 4? Negative 1 and 5. So our critical values would be negative 1 and 5 on a number line here. And then what we would do is we literally just test values, like plug in um, values on different intervals. So let's start here this way. What's a value less than negative 1? So let's plug negative 2 into the equation and see if it's a true statement. So I'm going to do my work up here. Negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 5. Is that less than 0? Let's see. That's 4 plus 8 minus 5. Is that less than 0? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 minus 5 is 7. Is 7 less than 0, everybody? No. So you're saying the this is no. That was not a true statement. So the answer is no on this interval. Let's plug in a value between negative 1 and 5 and see if it's a true statement. So let's plug in 0. Let's plug in the easiest. Between negative 1 and 5, 0 will be the easiest to plug in. So that would be 0 squared minus 4 times 0. So wouldn't that just go away? So is negative 5, look, is negative 5, less than zero or equal to it said less than or equal to zero yes right so we'd say yes on this interval from here to here it was a yes then let's test a value above five like plug in six so then you would have six squared minus four times six 
minus 5. Is that less than or equal to 0? So that would be 20, no, 36, minus 24, minus 5 is less than or equal to 0. That's 36 minus 29. Is that less than or equal to 0? No, right? 36 minus 29 is a positive number. Is a positive number less than 0? No, so the answer would be no on this interval. So now look, this just gave us the same solutions we got by graphing. Where does it say yes? Between negative 1 and 5. Between negative 1 and 5 was our solution. And then does it include 0? Yes. So these are the including zeros. These are the zeros. So these also get yeses. So yes, from negative 1 to 5. And then because they're both yeses, we put a bracket. You guys see how testing intervals for x also work? That would be easier than having to graph it every time. Yes. No, we did. And then we got 5 and negative 1. Okay. Well, multiplies would be negative 5 and adds up to be negative 4. 1 times 5, that would have been uh, negative 5. So that factors to be x plus 1 and x minus 5. So then we get negative 1 5. All right, so let's, do you guys see how we could have solved by testing intervals? So same thing here. We would have graphed. We would have made an x, y chart here. I mean, just an x chart. We just there for intervals for x. And we would have found our zeros by factoring, which are negative 1 and 5. So negative 1 and 5. And then look, we'll plug in values and see if it's a true statement. So let's plug in once again. Plug, oh. It's actually, yeah, it's negative 1 and 5. So let's plug in a value below negative 1, like negative 2. Didn't we already do this? When we plugged in negative 2, what did we get? Does anyone remember? Uh, negative 5 plus 7. Okay, so if, now let's do it in this one. So this one would have read... 7 is greater than 0, is that, no, that's not what we got, must not be, but let's recalculate it. When we plug in negative 2, oh, is it 7? Okay, awesome. If it is, so we plugged in negative 2 and you're saying we got out 7, that's probably what we got. So is 7 greater than 0? Look, is 7 greater than 0? Yeah, so we'd say yes here, then plug in a 0. When we plug in 0, we calculate it and we got... We got negative 5. Is negative 5 greater than 0? So we'd say no on this interval. You guys see? And then if we plug in a 6, we got a positive number. Is a positive number a positive number greater than 0? Yes. So now look. Where does it say yes? From negative infinity up to negative 1. And then not including negative 1 because this wasn't or equal to. So we'd say no here and no here because these ones were not including. And then it started from 5 and went to infinity is where it said yes. So basically the yeses are just your interval, guys. Right? Does that make sense, kind of? To solve a quadratic inequality, you first, you, we get a set equal to zero. Here's why. We want to, finding zeros of a quadratic are easy. So we're going to want to be able to find the zeros by factoring. So we have to get a set equal to zero. Testing intervals, once it's set equal to zero, is easiest. So first, get a set equal to zero. Second step, solve by factoring your quadratic formula. And we're going to use those zeros as our critical values. Since we're doing greater than or equal to zero, it would make sense that our zeros are our critical values, the values you test between, that create your intervals. And then third, we'll just make a number line and test out those values over different intervals and write it in interval notation. Wherever it says yes is our solution. Wherever it says no is not. So let's do this one as an example to go through our steps so you can just see how it works. So the first step is to get it set equal to zero. So well, shouldn't I subtract 10 over? Then we have our x squared minus 3x. And then we have minus 10 is greater than or equal to 0. Questions on step 1. Second step, solve to find our critical values by factoring. Find the zero. Since it's greater than or equal to 0, that's why we're finding the zeros. So you'd say, okay, what well, multiplies to be negative 10 and adds up to be negative 3. 5 times 2, negative 5. So this factors to be x minus 5 and x plus 2. So our solutions are x equals... 5 and x equals negative 2. Those are the critical values that we're going to put on our number line. So now that puts us on step 3. Make a number line. 
and put those values. So negative 2 is a critical value, and 5. Now we're literally just going to test on these different intervals. So let's plug in a value below negative 2, like negative 3, and then see if it's a true statement. I'll do my work in this bulletin point. So then right here, plugging it back in here, so that's negative 3 squared minus 3 times negative 3 minus 10. Is that greater than or equal to 0? 9 plus 9 yeah. minus 10. Is that greater than or equal to 0? Is 18 minus 10 greater than or equal to 0? Is 8 greater than or equal to 0? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So we'll write yes here. On that interval is a yes. Changing color so I can keep my work straight here. Let's plug in a value between negative 2 and 5. You guys, that's going to be, 0 is going to be the easiest to plug in. So you'll do 0 squared minus 3 times 0 minus 10. Is that greater than or equal to 0? Is negative 10 greater than or equal to 0? No, obviously. So we'd write no. Changing colors to blue. So most of the time it will bounce between yes, no, it will, yeah, it will bounce between. There are times, there are very, very, there's one rare situation where it will not bounce, and I can explain that in a minute. Possibly, that's why I just test them, yeah. So then if I plug in a 6, then I have 6 squared minus 3 times 6 minus 10, is that greater than or equal to 0? 36 minus 18 minus 10 is greater than or equal to 0, so that's um, 36 minus 28, is that greater than or equal to 0? Yes. So we'd say yes here. Now the next thing is, was it or equal to 0? Yes. So these little guys are yeses as well. These are the equals 0 part. These are the zeros. So they also are yeses. So now wherever it says yes is our answer. So let's write our answer in interval notation. It said yes from negative infinity up to negative 2, including negative 2. Then union, it also said yes from 5 on to infinity. So bracket 5 on to infinity. So there's our solution. Yeah. Yep, so if this didn't have this, we would know it's going to be parentheses. Yep. Hey, let's do another one. We'll go quicker this time. So first of all, okay? Yeah, I get it equal to 0, subtract 3x, subtract 3x. So then we have negative x squared minus 3x plus 10 is greater than 0. I can't quick factor because of the negative. Shouldn't we fix that? So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by a negative 1. But didn't I just divide? If I divide both sides with an inequality by a negative, we've got to flip the sign. So we got to do it to both sides. And then you'd say, so that's x squared. Now it's plus 3x. Now it's minus 10. And we got to flip the sign because we divided both sides by a negative. So now it's less than 0. So now we find our critical values, so we know what to put on our number line here. So we would factor it. What we'll multiplies to be negative 10 and adds up to be 3. 5 times 2, negative 2. Quick factoring, yes. X plus 5. X minus 2. So our critical values are negative 5 and 2. So let's go up here and put that in. Negative 5 and a 2. Now all we have to do is start testing intervals. So let's plug in a negative 6. So then that would be, I'm going to plug it in right here. So negative 6 squared plus 3 times negative 6 minus 10, is that less than 0? 36 minus 18 minus 10, is that less than 0? 36 minus 28, is it less than 0? No. So we'll write no. Then let's test an interval, I mean a value between negative 5 and 2, so 0. So then plugging it in here, 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 10. Is negative 10 less than 0? Yes, and then can't we probably most likely assume the next one's going to be a no? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to. I'll explain when you can. It's really rare. No. So this will be a no, but we can always test it. Now, are these little guys yes or no? Yeah. No. No equal signs, so these are also n's, no's. Okay, here we go. So where it says yes is our answer. That was from negative 5 up to 2, and then they were no's. Not bad. Once you know how to do it. Okay, awesome. Okay, so would this one be hard or easy? Easy. It's already factored. So it's easy. You'd say, okay, the first thing we do is 
We um, get a set equal to zero done. Next thing is find the critical values, which are five and negative two, and then we just test values. So let's plug in negative three. So that'd be negative three minus five times negative three plus two. Is that less than zero? That's negative eight times by negative one. Is that less than zero? Is eight less than zero? That's a no. So then let's plug. I would at least test two of them though. I would at least test these two because then you can catch your error. There, if you get no, no, they usually bounce. So you can be like, which one's wrong? Which one did I mess up on? Okay, let's plug in a zero. So that's zero minus five times zero plus two. Is that less than zero? Is negative five times two less than zero? Is negative 10 less than zero? Yes. yes, so we'd say yes. So we're probably okay to assume this is a no. So now from there, I mean, we are okay to assume that. Um, I'll show you a picture of one that won't work. Okay, so then from there, it's not equal to zero, so these are also no's. So wherever yes is, so you'd say from negative two up to five, not including. Are we good? Do you feel like with these? Okay, okay, I'm not gonna do any more except for this, I'm gonna show you one thing. So first of all, wouldn't we subtract seven and subtract eight Z? Even though it's two steps, because we'd want the Z to stay, we'd want the Z to stay positive, okay? With this one, it's gonna be long factoring, which is fine. It's just on our number line, it's gonna have some fractions, which is fine, right? It's no different. Same thing, test values. Are we okay with that? Do you want me to do that one? Okay, now let's look at this. Is this find the domain? Okay, let's see how we would do each of these, because it's actually just the same thing we just did with the quadratic one. So if this is find the domain, it means what x value can we be? We've done this a few days ago when we had this, right, everyone? So we can do it two different ways. We could graph it, which is what's the shift? Right eight, and then it looks like that. Or we could say under a square root, this is what I would do instead. Under a square root can be positive, true? Under a square root can be zero, that's fine. Under a square root cannot be negative on the real number line on the real number line. That's domain, domain is real number line. So isn't it true to say what's ever underneath needs to be larger than or equal to zero? Whatever's underneath. Yes. Even if it's a smiley face underneath. Whatever's underneath, smiley face would need to be greater than or equal to zero. Does everybody see my point here? Under, under, under a square root, right? We can't have negatives. So it would be greater than zero, but it can be equal to zero. So that would be my true statement. So then this one's linear, solve for x linear, so it's a linear inequality. We just add eight, right? X value is greater than or equal to eight. So in interval notation, you would say, X value is above eight or equal to eight. So you'd say including eight, and then it goes to infinity. Now let's do this one. What would be the true statement? Isn't this a square root? Under the square root, which is X squared plus eight X needs to be Greater than or equal to zero. Then how do we solve quadratic inequalities? Well, that's just what we learned how to do 50 seconds ago, right? We find the zeros, right? So we factor, we get it equal to zero, then we factor it. We find the critical values, zero and negative eight. Then we put it on a number line and test for yes and no, right? This is exactly what we just learned how to do. So you'd say, okay, zero, oh, negative eight, and zero, and then you would plug in for yes and no. So you plug in a negative nine. So then negative nine squared is 81, plus set eight times negative nine. So that's 81 minus 72. That's greater than zero, so this would be a yes. Then you would test a value between here and here, and then it would be no. And you test a value between above zero, and it would be yes. So what would my domain for this one be? Negative infinity up to? Yep, negative eight, does it include zero? Yes, yes. so bracket, exactly. union, then from bracket, zero to infinity. That would be the domain for this one. Either one, doesn't matter, you plug it in here or here. Or, yeah, either one. Okay, cool. That is the end of the lesson, so go practice something like that, because that is new to us, but not super hard.